Today in this video, I'm going to be talking about Hennoch Shenlen Purpura. Hennoch Shenlen Purpura, also known as IgA vasculitis, is a disorder that causes the small blood vessels in your skin, your joints, your intestine and kidney to become inflamed and bleed. And the most striking feature of this form of vasculitis is the purplish rash, where we call purpura, and it is present typically on the lower legs and the buttocks. So the four characteristic features of Hennock Schonlein purpura are purpura, atralgia, which means joint pain, abdominal pain, and also glomerulonephritis. The pathophysiology of HSP, the etiology is unknown, but there are several studies that show that it might be due to genetic predisposition and also antigen exposure. Due to increased circulating IgA levels and disruption in the IgG synthesis. The IgA and IgG will interact to produce complexes that activate the complement system and this causes the complement molecules to be deposited in affected organs. This precipitates inflammatory response with vasculitis. The clinical features of HSP include symptoms like fever, atralgia, which happens in two thirds of the patients. It normally occurs in the knees and ankles, and it is a non-disruptive form of arthritis. Patients may have colicky abdominal pain, hematemesis, which means vomiting of blood, and melena, which means there is blood in the stool. This is when there is petechia in the gastrointestinal tract developing. There is also renal involvement, glomerulonephritis, in 80% of the cases, where the children will present with hematuria, where there is blood in the urine, and also malproteinuria. They also have subcutaneous edema and also scrotal edema, presented with scrotal swelling. So these clinical features are usually preceded by a history of URTI a few weeks ago. For the signs of HSP, there is the characteristic rash, which is symmetrically distributed over the buttocks and pressure points, over the extensor surface of arms, legs and ankles, sparing the trunk. It is initially urticarial, developing into maculopapular rash and then into palpable purpura. We can see in this picture over here, this is a picture of purpura. And sometimes, patient might have periarticular edema. For investigation, we can do urinalysis to look for hematuria and proteinuria, which is seen in 10 to 20% of the patients. We can do platelet count and coagulation studies. Platelet count should be either normal or elevated in HSP. It must not be low. This is important to differentiate from immune thrombocytic uh, purpura, ITP. If the platelet count is normal, we can rule out ITP where usually there should be low platelet in ITP. We can also do serum lipase. If normal, we can. We know that acute pancreatitis is unlikely to be the cause. We do full blood count and differential, where in HSP, white blood cell may be elevated, and in differential count, there is sometimes eosinophilia seen. The ESR, which is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, is sometimes elevated since there is ongoing inflammation. And for bun and creatinine, it may be elevated due to renal damage or due to dehydration. Abdominal ultrasound can be done to look for intersusception, which is one of the complications for HSP. And also serum IgA level is expected to be elevated in HSP. For management, it is mainly symptomatic treatment. For joint pain, we can give ibuprofen or paracetamol to relieve the pain. For severe abdominal pain due to the interception causing colicky abdominal pain, we can give oral penicillin or IV corticosteroids if they are having nausea and vomiting. For renal involvement, like in cases with glomerulonephritis, we can do management for nephrotic syndrome. For those having proteinuria, especially nephrotic range of proteinuria, or signs of renal impairment, we can refer to the nephrologist. The prognosis of HSP is excellent. More than 80% of the patients have only a single isolated episode which lasts for only a few weeks. 
some might progress to ESRD, which is end-stage renal disease. And those who are at risk of this ESRD are those children who are having nephrotic syndrome or renal insufficiency. And for recurrence, approximately only 10 to 20% will have recurrence. That's all for my video. Thank you.